Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code, and today we'll be looking at classes. So in the last video, we had a look at structures, and this was our example. We could create a structure that was called person, give it a constructor, and give it two properties. And then we can use it in here to store some people using our dynamic list, and we can iterate through the array list and print out all the values, and that worked perfectly. But let's say for example we wanted to add other methods and other properties very easily then the structure doesn't really have the facility to include additional functions inside it what i mean by that is let's say we wanted to move this line of code into the function because what if we needed to print this out several times in our application we don't want to be copying and pasting this we want to be able to have something inside the structure that lets us just print all of the names and what if we add additional properties onto here? Then we have to go through every single one that we add that new property that we just appended A. And we have to do that for this one, and for this one, and for this one. And if we had a really big program, then this would be a problem. So let's try and take this structure example and make it into a class. So this can be done quite easily. First, let's get rid of these and get it back to how it was working. Okay, perfect. So now we can change this struct word to a class. So now we're saying we want a public class called person and the constructor works in exactly the same fashion. So we have the word public followed by the name of the class and our parameters and then our assignments to be able to store the parameters. Just by convention, we normally put the local variables at the top of the class, followed by the constructor. So now our program should work exactly the same way. Which it does, and that's perfect. And now we need to try and add our method that returns this function. So as we did in the functions video, we can make a new function inside here. We'd say public, and we want the return value to be a string, and we can say print person. And we don't need any parameters because we're just going to be using these two variables to be able to print a person. Then we could just say return name colon plus the name plus space hyphen followed by the age and then the age variable. And then now instead of using this every single time, we can just call person dot print person. Then we open the brackets, close the brackets. This is to indicate that this is a function call and there's nothing in the brackets because there's no parameters required. So now if we run the code, we can see it's formatted a little bit differently as per what we have in here, but it looks a lot better. And now the point is, is if we add additional properties into here and in the constructor and we append it here, we don't have to change every single function call when we're printing it to the user. We just change it once in the class and all of them will update. This is really helpful because this can save us a lot of time and a lot of code, as well as it keeps the code structure very nice and it helps for maintainability. It is really good practice to be able to use things called properties in our class. Is we have public and we also have private. And the meaning of these two words is that once you make an instance once you make an instance of the class that I'll demonstrate here, we can see when we do the dot notation, we can see that age is available in here. And age is indeed public. If we make the string public for the name, then we can also see it inside here. And this is really bad practice because if you're working on a project with multiple people, you don't want them to be able to access your fields directly, you want them to be able to access it if you give them access. And what I mean by this is, we can make these fields private. So then only the functions inside the class can change the values of these. So we can make a new public facing property called the same thing with a capital N for name. And in here, we can set the getter and setter. So when we want to retrieve the value for name, we could just do get, and then we can say return name. 
Now that will return as the name once we do the dot name property. So we could say in here dot name. Now that name is available, so that will give us all of the names. Like that. So it will return us back with just the names. Let's just return that back. Okay. Now we have the get sorted, we also want to be able to assign names and we want to do this through this setter as well instead of through the constructor directly. We want to go through our property because this is a better code structure to do. So we can have another set and inside the set we also have a default value that gets passed in called value. So we could just say in here name equals the value and this will just blindly set the value that gets passed in inside to here so then we get we can return the name and then when we set we can set the name and now if we do the same thing for the int there we go so now we can set and get both the name and the ages now that we've created both the name and the age properties, it's now time to use them. So instead of saying this.name, which is accessing our private string, we want to use the capital N to access our public string, which gives us access to this setter. And the same thing with the age. And then when we also want to access them here, we want to use the capitals as well. And it's in here, now that the name here and the name here and the age here and the age here are actually different because of the capital letter, we don't actually require this anymore. So we could say our name, which is our public string, is set to the name that comes from the parameter and our age is set from the age that comes from the parameter. Perfect. So now also you should see not a lot of difference in the code, but you'll realize that this structure is a lot better. And the reason why it's a lot better is we can actually do things inside here to make it a little bit more complicated. Now, we don't want to be setting a name if their value is empty. So we could just do in here that if the string is null or empty and place value inside here and we can open the curly braces. Just to note, the string library has lots and lots of functions inside and you can explore them by typing string followed by the dot and then you can have a look in here there is compares, there's concard, there's empty. We will explore these in the future. But for now, we'll be using is null or empty. So this essentially checks for null or it checks for two empty backslashes. So this is really good to have because this is safer than simply just saying this. This will also work, but then this won't check for no values. So then you could say and value is equal to null. But instead of doing that, you could just use the string library is null or empty and place value inside. This if statement is in, if the string is null or empty, but because we put the exclamation point before it, it nots it. So this is essentially saying is not null or empty, then that means there has to be a value inside. And if there's a value inside, then we can do our assignment. If there isn't a value inside, or the user hasn't inputted a name by accident, then we can just print something to the screen saying, sorry, no name entered. And this is really good because then this way, we are not actually storing a name that's either null or empty. And we can do the same thing for age. With our age, we don't want to set something that's less than zero. So we can say if the value is smaller than or equal to zero, then we set the age to zero. Else, if if the value is greater than or equal to, let's say 125, because we don't want our program to store anyone who's over 125, then we can set it like this. And if the user inputs a value from 1 to 124, then we want to just add an additional else that will catch everything else, and we could just do age equals the value. Because if they've passed this check, and they've passed this check, then that means they have inputted a correct value that does fit our requirements, which is to be between one and 124. So then we can assign the value. And now if we run the code and I type nothing and then type 900, 
then we see sorry no name entered. If I type ab but also type 900, and if I type ab and type minus 900, we can see the outputs like this. We don't have a name because we didn't insert a name, and then we have an integer value that's above 125, so it wrapped it to 125, and the same thing with the second input and the third input, because the value was smaller than or equal to zero, it said to zero. Perfect. So this is just a quick overview on how to use classes. So as you can see, this is slightly more complicated than using a structure. Classes are mainly used when you have lots and lots of different features that you want inside of a class, and then you can use it. The main feature of classes is that you can use functions inside here, and then you can call them as many times as you want, and you have that safety that you know that if you need to change one of the functions, you only need to change it once, and the rest of the lines will update in your program. This is really good because it helps for maintainability in the future of your program. So just to have a quick run through, the main program in here did not really change much. It was mainly just the class that we had created. The only line of code in the main program that we changed was that now we are printing the person instead of typing this directly inside here. So just to go through our class, we have two private variable, a string name and an int age. And what we can do with these is create properties. So in our getter, it's very simple because we're just returning the name. But in our setter, we only want to be setting the name if it actually has a value. If it doesn't, we can tell the user, sorry. And the same thing for age. We can get the age and it's very simple to just return it. And we only want to set the age if the values are within the correct ranges. If they're not within the correct ranges, then we can just set our own values. Like if it's less than zero, we set it to zero. If it's greater than 125, we set it to 125. Else, we just set it to what the user has typed in. And in our constructor, we're using our properties that we just discussed to assign the local variables passed in by the parameters. And finally, we just have a public string, print person, that lets us just print all of the details of the person. Should we need to add additional properties, we could just append this function and the rest will update. I hope this made sense. In the next video, we'll be looking at inheritance. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below and I'll take a look. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.